You're not perfect. I'm not sure if you knew that. I don't mean to say in any way that I, I wanted you to be, I expected you to be, I needed you to be perfect. Did you think I, I wanted you to be? You don't have to. You see, because I'm not either that one perfect person, that one perfect human being, because human means we're flawed, made and created to do great things, to achieve the extraordinary, but we get caught up in the, the fairly, the moderate, the adequate, not at all perfect. You see, you're not perfect. But I wasn't looking for perfection. I wasn't looking for the best. Let me rephrase that. I wasn't comparing you to this world's test. Amber tone, curvaceous hips, lush, luscious lips, and and hypnotic eyes, no, those are not on my list. Perfect on the screen, that ain't perfect to me. I was thinking more of an artistic rendering with flaws that reflect cause, passion that would make me pause, interrogate, appreciate, the person behind the body, the passion that creates the character. See, I don't buy the canvas for the frame. I buy it for the artwork of the creator. You see, you're not perfect. You're magnificent. More than you know. You hold value forevermore in every redeeming flaw. Let me rephrase that better. In every brushstroke of your creator, not damaged, defined, not flawed, redesigned, not perfect, but for certain, a life made to shine. You see, you're not perfect. And see, that's what makes you perfect to me. My name is Kui Paul. Thank you, Biola, for having me today. So, how many Filipinos in the house? Yeah. What's in that? Um, I'm Kuya Paul. Kuya means big brother in Tagalog or Filipino, so I'm big brother Paul, so nice to meet you. Um, so, real quick, uh, if you like my poetry, um, it's at kuyapaulpoetry.com. You have all my social media there. Please follow me if you like it. And if you don't like it, you know, it's okay. I love you anyway. Um, I, I do have a table in the back, so if you guys are at the chapel, if you want to squeeze by over there, I have a limited amount of free gifts if you guys want to pick something up. Um, just for my gratitude for you guys having me here, and I really am blessed to be here, Biola. Thank you so much. Thank you, Biola. Thank you to the rest of the staff. I do have time for one more poem. I don't... Um, uh, I don't like putting like things in front of my poem too much. I just kind of want you to hear it, but it is entitled Gentleman, and it is um, derived basically from um, altar calls. How, how many of you guys have been or seen an altar call at church? So my, uh, so many pastors that I've seen always called God, oh, he's a gentleman, you know, he doesn't want to, he's going to wait for you, but when I hear that word gentleman, um, it kind of brings me to this piece, because I was once told that my God was a gentleman. What does that mean, gentleman? Does it mean he wears a top hat, a monocle? He sports a cane. He bows a lot. Wears suits, ties, shiny shoes, seriously. What does that mean to you? Because when I think of my God, he's not gentle. Let me rephrase that a little. My God spoke the universe with a gesture. Just a word on his lips spoke the worlds into existence, a power like a billion nuke bombs exploding in unison. Now the magnitude of that quaking was meant for creating, don't get me wrong, that power can be threatening, so gentle. You mean like the shepherd of my soul that leads me to still waters, he restores me, but whoa. Don't forget, he's a man of war. 
with a fire like aura bursting from his core. That gentle shepherd rides on a warring war horse. He's not just a lamb to the slaughter. He's a king of kings forever. You see, my God is not gentle. You think it means timid. Because if you provoke him, his wrath wins and consumes your very being, even less remains than ash. And with one word spoke, commands heaven's host, although his power alone could bring you to your knees if your body still remained. So my God, being gentle. Yes, he's a God of love. Now don't get me wrong, the God of mercy and grace, of hope and faith, that paid a great cost, suffered a great loss, dying on that cross. Let's think about that for a second. Because none of us could have paid the price that he paid. None of us could save. Because even our love pales in comparison to the amazing power of love of the chosen one. You see, even his gentle love, it's not gentle at all. They say he'd never come in without your permission. News flash, people. He died against your consent. He didn't ask for your go ahead. He died against your wishes. Because truth be told, even his love is vicious. So when I think about my gentle God, I can't see. Instead, I perceive that his hands are dirty still caked with mud and blood, still scarred with nails that tore cartilage. His hands, they're splintered. His feet, they're blistered. His brow still caked with the sweat of that scorching day. Even his chest and his back, they're buffed up. They're not thin. All from bench pressing asin. His shouts are loud, they echo, they rage, like torrents making landfall, like tornadoes twisting houses. His war cry, it howls, it resounds, my soul. Because all gentle really means is almighty power under control. So my God, a gentleman. Thank you so much, Biola. My name is Puya Paul. Thank you so much. God bless you. Have a good rest of your semester. Thank you. I wish I was beautiful. I wish I was beautiful as in 36, 24, 36, with big blue eyes, sun-kissed hair, and an ass to die for. I'd like to think I could become a, a Latina Barbie doll who would cook the pollo, watch novella, do the laundry, and shake my booty all around the bedroom while consistently keeping my apron spotless and my mouth shut. And maybe then I would be seen. And being seen is beautiful. I wish I was beautiful. I wish I was beautiful as in Jessica Simpson, Jennifer Aniston, or J-Lo. I'd like to think I could become a famous movie star whose belly button lint some men would spend thousands of dollars for and who everyone would love and adore and for whose naked body photographers would hide five hours in a dumpster truck for. And maybe then I would be seen and being seen is beautiful. I wish I was beautiful. I wish I was beautiful as an always confident, witty, well-liked, and charming. I'd like to think I could be quickly loved by others, never once messing up the essence of feminine perfection. And maybe then I would be seen, and being seen is beautiful. But I am not these things. And if these are the things that would make me be seen, I would rather be unknown. As in the parsley that adds a touch of class to the omelet at Denny's. Or the hidden jasmine that adds a sense of pure bliss to a bland garden. Or the old lady who adds a quarter to the parking meter when you're not looking. God, 
I wish I was beautiful, like these flashes of grace in an otherwise unfriendly world. And maybe then, I would not care about being beautiful. I would relish in being here, whether you see me or not. My name is Ana Sanchez. I'm alumni here at Biola. Um, I graduated from Biola in 2003. Um, I've been doing spoken word since I was a student. I'm also an actress and just pursuing a creative vocation. And I feel really old this morning coming back here and seeing all of you. <laughs> um, this next poem is one that I wrote um, earlier this year, um, the week that I was actually supposed to be performing at Biola's um, Student Congress on Racial Reconciliation Conference, my grandmother passed away. And that was a really painful week, and um, I was trying to think through how do I honor my grandmother's legacy, how do I talk about things like justice and um, God's love, and this is a poem that I think is probably relevant to you guys, and I'm gonna take advantage of it because I'm the old person sitting up here talking to you. So, um, this poem is called, My Advice to You. One, get a little lost. Lose yourself in the thin places, the places God sees the beaches cradling bodies of Syrian children, the sidewalks cradling bodies of young black men running hands up from war after war after war after war after war after war after war on their existence, leveling the landscape, leaving the living with shelves of bodies. Two, mistake with abandon. Mess up the expectations of the world. Weep with those who do not deserve your tears. Confess your shortcomings with courage. Sin, a little, with those who will take you seriously as a result. You're going to do so anyways. You might as well do it with purpose. Run fiercely towards any hope you see instead of becoming best friends with cynicism. Walk boldly into rooms with those who do not belong there. Honor the sharing of the stories of the broken as solemn sacraments meant to be carried close to one's chest. Three, forget the numbers. Ignore all equations leading you away from love. Hands of mercy do not have more value than the scales of justice. Stumbling does not subtract from your golden worth. Adding condemnation to truth does not protect a shelter from evil. Dividing the heart from the brain does not calculate helpful narratives. Measuring out grace in small spoonfuls will not leave you with friends. Compassion plus time will not always lead to change. Practice it anyways. Four, trust in your loveliness. Dwell in this thought, even if it chafes you. Your beauty, yours, 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 is the antidote to death. Thank you. I wrote this to a pop song. In protest, I wrote this to a pop song on a diner napkin, spiraling out from center, a tiny cyclone of hope, placed it in the, in the palm of a fellow patron, watched him immediately stop everything and give praise to the patriarch. This is how the fire starts. Art from bent knee, new song to true king, chiseled statue till palms bleed, blood bright as king's gold, siphoned into an inkwell and to write out the greatest story ever told. Tell it in watercolor, 
pushed, pushed into the half sleeve of an ex-convict. Prison guard turns blind eye, still sees with his heart, nods a prayer, remembers being found by God in the crash of cymbals, wept as he worshiped the father on his late father's drum set, lamented the time, prayed the gospel to his wife, then she to her sister, then they would work to battered women, a boat and a bat, one to symbolize the journey to heaven, the other to send her ex to heaven should he ever come back. May our bodies create honor to the creator. From subtle ticks to lavish expressions, a smile is as much art as a symphony, and both can make a day. And sometimes, sometimes, his spirit reaches from between the teeth of a symphony to pull those dark, those in the dark, into the light. So make what you were made for. I read that the Lord met a non-believer in the spine of his sketch pad. True story. Atheist to evangelist. Pookie and them say they don't believe it, but I seen it right there in the vibrato of the violin strings. Not the first violin, way too much ego. The fourth violin, the one who sobs in reverence whenever they stand for hallelujah and handles Messiah. She's got a special needs child who paints masterpieces with autism. Every tantrum is, why daddy doesn't me want? Scribbled in calligraphy, father of three saw the words mounted on a potential mistress's wall, came to his senses, went home to his wife, danced I'm sorry on his knees, took her four months of practice to sculpt her heart, mind, and mouth into I forgive you. Lord, if I give you all of myself, will you make me a crescendo? A banshee scream for change, a syncopated wail to wisdom, weaning the weak ones off the whispers of the blood-red wizard. Dude writes pop songs, convinces some kids to rap in wrath, other kids to dance to it, arch their backs nasty to it. He's stealing the culture into chaos in three-fourth time. It's the nature of the times. But creation is the nature of God's people, so surely the, crea the created are the most creative on the planet, so surely no canvas is safe from the Christians. So surely a pop song is potential. Architecture is evangelism. The first doodle of the day is tithe, and a poem jotted on a napkin, placed in the palm of anyone, is love. Perhaps the best you can do is an origami hat. Inlay it with a burning prayer. Lay it on the head of an orphan every week until adoption day when he gives one back with an inlaid red letter that reads, to be completely honest, construction paper hats are pretty stupid. But when they never stop coming, when you never stop coming, when everyone else keeps leaving, I swear it's lo like looking right into the face of God. This is our call. Call me crazy. I don't believe we should hold back anymore. Excuses are silly. These days, you can create a compelling, non-cheesy film about Jesus on a cell phone. Touch lives from jazz in your leg bones. Trombone plays hope like his last breath was given to glass blow. Every vase he formed was a kiss blown, a message defiantly riding on the back of a pop song directed to lost souls. God loves you. Come on home. Y'all really did give me a lot of time, man. Like, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. But I'm not going to use it all. So I, 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 like to not, uh, I like to not give explanation to the poem, but I'm going to give it to this one. I'm breaking a lot of rules today, trust me. My poets who are in the audience are like, yo, you're not supposed to do that. That's not what you told us to do. You're a liar, coach. You're a liar. Um, but I am. I'm breaking a lot of rules because I feel close to you guys. I feel close. So the explanation of that poem is not that everybody in here should become an artist. Though many of you are, praise God, keep doing, make, making stuff. Um, but that all of us, just like the old lady, the widow with two mites, all she had was that to give and, and, and for her offering. Whatever we got, a little bit or a lot, whether it be a poem or a smile or a handshake, a hug, a tap dance, whatever the case may be, all can be done to unto the glory of God. And unto the glory of God, everything can be used. Uh, to evangelize and bring people to him, right? God will use all of it. So it's, it's a, hopefully an encouragement to you. Hopefully you're like, yeah, I get that. I'm going to do that right now. I'm about to go draw something or just smile or whatever the case may be unto the glory of God. Cool? Understand? Yes? Okay. So I got, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so I got one more poem. 
Again, breaking my rules. It's on my phone. I don't believe in this. But I'm doing it because I feel close to y'all. This one is really, really short, and it's about being a college student because I understand. I wrote this last night. It's a little rough around the edges. <laughs> I'm right in the camera. Camera, you good? All right, there you go. All right, so this requires uh, crowd participation, so it works like this. I'm going to say a year, and you're going to say, oh, yeah, okay, so it's going to go like this. I'm going to say, freshman year at Biola, and you say, oh, yeah. okay, cool, here we go. This is going to be, I don't know what's going to happen. I have no idea. I don't know. It's an experiment. Here we go. I got to get a little bigger. It's at 55%. Woo. I feel you right now. I'm feeling old. I'm feeling old. So I'm eyes. <laughs> Freshman year at Biola. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm about to run this school. Double major, pre-med and Spanish with a minor in Norwegian philosophy just because. <laughs> GPA 3.95. It would be a 4.0, but I got to have a social life. <laughs> Speaking of social life, I'm about to be rolling with all the cool kids. Tony, what up? I see you crazy, Kev. That boy, wild. Nay, nay, you looking good, girl. Not as good as my girl, though. She's going she's gonna to be the finest girl in any college. Looks like Beyonce. A mind like Jay-Z's wife. Confidence like Blue Ivy's mom. And vocals like that girl who used to sing with Destiny's Child. I can't remember her name, though. She won't be able to resist me. I'm going to get that freshman 15 of muscle, waking up every day at 4.30 a.m. to hit the weights. Call me Tony Toned. Zac Efron will see me and put his shirt back on. Yeah, Zac Efron must be real buff. Y'all were like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's good, you know, he got, you know, but I'm like, really? Okay, all right. This year is gonna be crazy, and it'll be even ne better next year. Sophomore year at Biola. Yeah, college chemistry is real hard, yo. <laughs> like, somebody could have told me that when I was talking about being pre-med. My grades, you know, they weren't what I expected, but you know what? You know what? Passable grades aren't limited to A's, okay? So, you got A, B, C, and D. So, really, I've got options, <laughs> right, which is pretty darn awesome. Um, I dropped my major and my double major. I'm really just going to buckle down on, on pre-med, and I'm optimistic about my performance. I could probably do a lot better if my hall will go to bed before 3 a.m., though. Don't get me wrong, it's really fun in the first few weeks, but at some point, I have to complete assignments. It would be incredibly helpful if y'all didn't compete to see who had, whose, fart is, whose farts were the most wet <laughs> in my dorm. This is crazy, man. I'm probably going to have to move off campus next year. Junior year at Biola. Oh, yeah. Junior year at Biola. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> Someone is relating. <laughs> Someone relates. <laughs> Look, I just went ahead and changed my major. I mean, straight up. There's only so many labs a man can handle, especially after that doctor visit. I've been really irritable and unmotivated, anxious about the future. He did diagnose me with senioritis, which is ridiculous. I'm only a junior. I think this, it's because of my breakup. Yeah, my girl broke up. Well, we, grew, we broke up with each other. It was mutual. We just felt like we were, we were neglecting God. But I'm living off campus now, so that's good. For the low, low price of $37 a month, I rent a partially furnished two-bedroom, one-bathroom apartment with eight other guys. <laughs> I don't get to sleep in an actual room, but after a heated game of rock, paper, scissors, I won the spot next to the oven. Boom. <laughs> Senior year at Biola. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm about to be out this piece. Sorry, guys. Gotta run. 
just came by to grab some caffeine. I got a full-time job and an internship on top of 24 units. I live on Americanos. It's just what I got to do to graduate. Nope, I have no idea what I'm going to do when I get out of here. People assume the first thing will be marriage. While my new girl and I are doing great, the last time I was daydreaming about marriage, the woman decided to dump me to date God, who looks suspicious, suspiciously like my intramural ultimate Frisbee teammate. Again, somebody's relating. <laughs> somebody's like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> We're taking our time and just trying to graduate right now. Let's see what happens at, let's see what happens next year. Graduate school at Biola. Yeah, how the heck did this happen? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jason O'Neill. Thank you so much for having me. Biola University prepares Christians to think biblically about everything, from science to business to education and the arts. Learn more at biola.edu.